as, as one of the very few international interviews I've I've done. Uh, where are you located right now? Um, well, God darn it! You know that's a good question because I was going to um, hold on. Just one sec. Mm -hmm. uh, that's such a, a good question, really. It's, <laughs> it's, southern, it's southern France and um, Avignon, which oh. is A-V-I-G-N-O-N. -A yes. Um, it's not quite on the coast. It's about, oh, I don't know, uh, not far. It's, it's not far from... Um, Oh, I don't know. You know, those like Monaco and all those sort of. Right. Yeah. Well, I may be wrong about that. It's sort of south, um, you know, southwest, but not not on the coast. OK, so not technically part of the French Riviera, but near. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sounds right. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, and you know just because you were just mentioning that it's it's supposed to be like 104 degrees and, and that it's it's almost that temperature now even though it's at 9 p.m when you're recording this thing um that makes me you know curious how does that affect your performance uh as a musician and and, and actually how does it affect your your bass the the instruments um it's you know the instrument as far as ba bass guitar can handle it no problem the kind of instruments that are um, prone to uh being problematic and the stuff like keyboards computer driven you know stuff mm. with circuit boards and stuff like this that when they get heated up so synthesizers but bass is pretty sturdy thing it's it's, it's going to hold up just fine the hardest part it's just the discomfort, sweating, playing. I don't know how guitar players solo in this stuff. I'm always, uh, I'm like, how the heck do you? Because I struggle enough as it is just on bass, um, you know, in this sort of heat. So it's just uncomfortable, but you're sweating your ass off. And you yeah. you, you tend to sort of look at the set list, like, in, and, and you go like, well, uh, we're at 17% through the show. Now we're at 27 You know, I mean, yeah. just, it, it's tough. You know, frankly, it, I mean, I don't, I don't want, I said I wouldn't whine, but it, it, it is hard playing in the heat. But it's hardest on the acts. You know, we'll have, there's um, opening acts before us. And in fact, tomorrow night, I don't really want to call him an opening act. It's more like a co-headlining thing, but he does go on before us. And it's going to be Jeff Beck oh. and in his band with um, Johnny Depp. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So well, They'll get fried. <laughs> it, it could be the end of Jeff Beck and Johnny Depp as we know it. Tomorrow, <laughs> which some people will probably will be very interested in seeing. Because right. it's, it's an outdoor venue outdoor classic european summer wow you know they just set these things up sort of like in the states at least uh, it seems like you know we have these amphitheaters that are really designed you know for outdoor music right uh in europe they just go uh yeah this is a fine parking lot we'll put it here <laughs> you know um at least that's what it appears to me i mean there's it really is just a slab of concrete somewhere but what's oh, yeah. amazing is that you you know you do the sound check and you're looking at going man uh, nobody's going to come to this thing right who's going to come <laughs> it's just a, a bunch of concrete but they will absolutely pack the place to mm. if you know it's probably sold out and um there'll be a gazillion people and suffering but they're such troopers here they're a little um uh, they're a little tougher than us in the states i i it, it appears yeah uh, yeah yeah no but the more i see of concerts filmed around the world the more i think wow we have we have some of the more sedate audiences uh in in music in general um yeah yeah and that, that, not that that's a, necessarily a bad thing you know i'm just but it's just interesting it is i mean they, i mean they go i mean they they probably i would say yeah they are a little more enthusiastic and i think part of that 
is um well, I shouldn't I was going to say it's summer and they're so excited to be outside and it's mm -hmm. uh you know they just they just seem to throw they they party like crazy in the summer here so like mm. they'll be, like oftentimes we'll come into a town you know we we do all our traveling overnight yeah come into town at like 5 30 in the morning or f between 4 and 5 30 say and the streets are teeming with people and it's wow. like it's yeah it's incredible it really is and it, and the sun will come up it comes up early so there they are and they're just uh the, the the joie de vie does truly exist here mm. far more you know more so than in the states yeah yeah i know i mean i mean i've been to you know very excited audiences uh in the united states you know where people are genuinely into it uh but then recently i saw some concert footage of uh acdc in south america and i'm like wow you would have thought those u.s crowds were asleep compared to what how intense they get it's intense and the other thing is that we don't do the thing we don't do in the states is you know these people sing in fact you don't need to sing your show at all we don't need singers oh. the audience at all and they know every word and they will sing so loud um you know, you when you have these little breaks where you go, okay, no, you you guys sing, and it's like, wow, they're they're amazing. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, and like you say, very enthusiastic, and yeah, it's fun. That part mm -hmm. is really fun. I've enjoyed that. Uh, um, watching it, it is just fun. It's great to see people having such a great time. And out of curiosity, I mean is it that way in europe on the whole or is it, does it differ from country to country well i you know my touring in in europe is kind of limited because uh, um you know huey never did much international travel so we didn't really get to i haven't really done enough of it to to you know yeah really know if it's like that from north to south but i'm going to find out because this tour well, we'll go down to Italy and be up in Norway. So it's pretty from north to south. Yeah, you're covering a good number of countries there. Absolutely. We were last night. We were in uh, Belgium, so that's uh, 16 hours mm -hmm. away. So, and uh, yeah, some of the routings a little like I sort of go. Wait a minute. We're, we just saw what, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> and then you know again just shut up don't complain <laughs> <laughs> oh and the tour bus is completely different here that's the first thing a, an, Amer uh, an american musician gets to find out they're double decker buses oh. so yeah so you go in as you go you go in the back passengers go in the back okay and then there's like a spiral staircase wow. and then all the bunks are upstairs downstairs is the um lounge so to speak but right. they're actually seats more like a bus and they don't face each other so whereas in the states you have that lounge with the sort of couches right, right you know right. on a standard you've been in a million tour yeah. buses right um i wish i had um i could you know with these things if we could only i'm sure it's very doable but you know if i could have a little insert with showing pictures <laughs> while i talk yeah um but it's it's um upstairs where the bunks are there is where the actual there's the lounges there's one in the back and and the real uh cool thing about a european tour bus is in the front of the bus above the driver is the another lounge with a window with looking oh. straight ahead so you can uh, you're not like you know you can just and this is where i've taken my uh um residence this is my <laughs> room i've decided you know <laughs> right so you know uh, uh, there's only no I, i'll allow a few people in there now and then <laughs> but it seems still, still the guys are still in the back you know the party's still in the back yeah and um um but i love that window because you can I, it's it, um especially for those that occasionally get a little motion sickness perhaps oh yeah and, you know how when you're looking straight ahead it seems to be a little 
Oh, it's much better. Yeah. Easier on the tummy, you know? Right, right. But, so I dig that. Um, yeah, that's that, that, that's a, a really big part of European touring. It's the bus. It's it's uh, about the bus. And today, like, for instance, our crew bus, boy, they've had some bad luck. Two days in a row, they've had the bus break down, which is a drag when it's 104 outside Ooh. because not a, where do you hide? Yeah, and when, right. And if the bus shuts down, there's no AC. Right. So we might have a, a fairly sleepy crew tomorrow now. <laughs> we shall I, see. Right. I did see that actually just uh, uh, today, uh, a little bit ago, you guys put had a post about your 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 bus driver and uh, a nice little thank you for, for him, you know, uh, uh, persevering and getting you all over, which I thought was cool. You don't often see that. Yeah, um, and in fact, we uh, they've got some a little some more stringent rules regarding. Uh, we have two drivers uh, due to the length, and they, like every five, I believe it's every four hours, every something like that. They they are it's mandatory forty five minute break. So mm. The bus just stops, driver comes out, makes a coffee or whatever, and then uh, you can't. I mean, it's it's they're probably on some sort of computer system so they couldn't uh and, and they always complain about it. they go you know ah it's terribly silly rules <laughs> and, but but they're protecting us you know yeah no you don't want a drowsy driver but as as huey and so many others have pointed out on a tour the bus driver really is the most important guy <laughs> he really is i yeah. mean you know, so after every, you know, like after last night, you know, you get off the bus and the first thing you do is, you know, wildly hug the driver. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks for getting us here safe. Wow. And why did you pick this job? You know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, our one of our bus drivers is a, is a bass player. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's a total character. This guy's fantastic. In fact, we just had dinner with him, and they're all the, the whole our whole crew is pretty much German. They come from Germany, so there might be a few Dutch people, but it seems like mostly these guys are all, mm -hmm. uh, you know, characters from Germany. And this guy was, uh, you know, um, he wanted to be in the music biz, and I guess he he, he realized at some point bass might not work out for him financially yeah uh so for 20 years he's been riding a bus but he looks far more like a rock star than i do i'll say <laughs> that this guy really plays he's got it down it's fantastic wow okay well so how how does he look like the rock star oh he looks like uh he looks like jeff beck in 1971 okay. or, or chris guest in spinal tap one of the <laughs> No. Yeah, just the long hair and maybe muscle. Yeah, the features. long hair, but it's also like with the in the face, with the bangs kind of thing, and the huge glasses. <laughs> and, uh, great dude, though. Fantastic. Very and, cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Now, one thing that um, always interests me when people talk about the difference between touring in the U.S. and Europe is sometimes some songs. Uh, didn't really do anything in the U.S., but they were humongous in Europe. Amazing, yeah. And so, has your how much has your guys' set list changed from the U.S. tour to the European tour? Well, it changes in two ways. One, the uh, you know with Journey, we only had a one-hour set. Mm. So, so um, and then this this set is you know two hours. So it's at least five six additional songs and it's pretty much the same set we did i mean i think all the songs we did in the states we're doing um on this one with the additional f five or six songs and one song in particular is a song called uh oh good here we go <laughs> folks this is what happens after 16 hours on a bus right. <laughs> um um Oh God! Do I need to get out the set list? Uh, it's going to come to me. You wouldn't happen to have? No. Uh, you don't have last night's set list. No. Uh, <laughs> they they forgot to send that to me. Okay, no. I just it's called "Stop Loving You." Oh, okay, yeah. It's called "Stop Loving You." 
it was absolutely and like so many things with Toto, they're not particularly big in the States. Here it's probably bigger than Africa. Really? Wow. Yeah, we do we do Africa last, yeah. which of course they 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 love they love it. It's fun to watch. They sing that one like crazy loud. Mm. Then we do the encore, then we do this song that I've never real I had never heard before. And they're going crazy. And it's just, yeah, the, the, it's very strange what songs, uh, you know, how different our taste is in the States. Yeah. You, you got that right. It is, and, it's an interesting phenomenon. And now that you've been playing, you know, uh, for a while, I'm, I'm curious also from your perspective, <sighs> What songs do you look at differently now that you are playing them instead of, you know, a person who was, who, you know, was always familiar with it and, and listened as a fan and such and a friend, but now that you're playing, has that changed your perspective on any of these tunes? Well, I'm still, uh, you know, even after all this time, it's still taking, uh, I, I still need a lot of concentration. I mean, I'm still thinking through these things. Um, I, I can't, what's changed? You know, that one song probably, Stop Loving You, is probably the one that most, you know, because I, I just, I'm trying to figure out what, what, what is it about this song? And, you know, in the past, I remember, you know, we've discussed you know, we've always had this notion that perhaps they like minor chords better in Europe and mm. where it states. Mm, I don't know. There might be something to that. Uh, they, they, they definitely are. They let you like, for instance, um, our, we have this, our keyboard is this guy named Xavier and um, Xavier is, he's a, he's an insanely great player and then one thing we don't do with journey is have these solo spots and he gets his own uh god last night he, he boy we were I, I think um at one point our singer came over and goes does uh x know we have a show going on here uh, <laughs> um he, but he went uh, he, off on uh quite a well, he quite a show like, of his own he's so smart because he plays like every night it's like a piano concerto it's a, it's like wow. Mozart, and they respond to it like that they would in the states you would see people sort of start, you know head to the bathroom and no. they, would, they would just kind of be going you know you know right. kind of, what? Uh, and here they're mesmerized and then they're clapping and if he does something like some flourish or something they like respond it's just a really a very uh uh a different thing in that respect yeah yeah interesting then again it's europe that has kept you know jazz musicians alive for so many years too so that's they sort of have this a little they have more respect for the musical side of of uh rock and roll and melody and things like that you mm -hmm. know they to get it right right and you know I, i'm curious i mean I, I know you know you guys did a lot of rehearsing before heading off on this does do songs though still kind of change and evolve as you guys tour yeah in some ways i think yes absolutely absolutely um you know there's things like as like for instance me and Sput, the drummer, you know, ha have picked up little things that we weren't maybe doing um, three months ago. You know, just little things that are pretty subtle, really. I don't think the average listener is going to be that. But for us, it's, you know, it's like, wow, that, that's cool. Let's do that again. Or, you know, we found it, you know, we found a, a, a neat way of doing this song or mm -hmm. that's that's an interesting twist. And, and so they do evolve. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things I was always kind of curious about, but I didn't know how locked down, you know, things, things would be. Uh, so this band, uh, you know, I mean, since it's such a sort of heavy on the uh, musicality, um, we're allowed to um, 
stretch out a bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, although every show is the same in structure, there's, there's little things that happen that, that make it differ from night to night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a, a side tangent. So, uh, you know, I was going through posts that you guys have done on social media and there was one where it was a, a, a shot of you and, and, and uh, I think a couple of the other guys, but it referred to you as Pim. And I'm wondering where did that come from? And what, what is it even a uh, that, reference that, to? That, that came from the from from the news. That's where I I, I gave myself that name for really. Uh, because, yeah, uh, it's kind of not a great not a great story. I don't, it's, uh, <laughs> it, um, and I'm not sure why. I just I think just you know just out of, as a joke one night I said okay I'm going to make a solo album, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to call it Pimp. <laughs> uh, and, and so. To make it, I don't know, a little more palatable, I think it became P-I-M with an apostrophe. But this was something that occurred pre-Toto. Oh, okay. Yeah, the news guys were uh, uh, the first to board on that one. But it, it was a silly, silly thing that I kind of created. I created oh, okay. that, that monster on my own. <laughs> that was the first I've ever... I've ever heard of it, you know, or, or yeah, what the hell is that? Pim? Yeah. Yeah. And nothing I suppose my mom would be particularly proud of. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it, it does explain why maybe Huey stuck with the moniker of the cat in the hat. Uh, there you go. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's not, and I, uh, you know, I'm never introduced as that. It's just something that, yeah, probably one of the fellows in the band, posted you know yeah just for fun right right and then also you know in and amongst these uh, europe show photos there was a, there's a really great one and it's taken from the perspective of the stage looking out to the audience and it's just you and steve lukather you know kind of leaning on each other and there's this massive sea of people in front of you and first i'm wondering you know since you guys have known each other since pretty much childhood is that a is that kind of a a, a funny moment like hey we were just kind of kids a minute ago dreaming of this and now oh we talking about it all the time mm. yeah it's like i mean we uh, it, it's beyond childhood we've known each other as long as we've been conscious, um, because he lived like two blocks away. Oh, we grew up together. So right. I've never not known Steve. And then um, it's actually, it's a, it's a fairly sweet thing, you know, I mean, that we're, we're doing it and, and every night, you know, it is a fun moment. And uh, yeah, now during the introduction, we've sort of got this thing where I come up and it's, we're just kind of like, he's talking about me and we're just sitting there like, yeah the holding arms i mean it's 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 a it's a cute little moment is all it is really yeah but it, i mean it must be i don't know just such a weird um you know it is it blows our minds yeah and um you know i mean even on stage steve will look at me and i'll just sort of go like it's just nuts or what right. i mean <laughs> how the right. hell did, is this this is what we this is what we dreamed of for christ's sake it's uh it's wild. Yeah. And then, well, it also makes me wonder, do you have, I don't know, would you say more of a connection with Steve on stage musically because of that, because of knowing him so long, than maybe you do the other members of the band? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and also, you know, my, um, the, my role in this band, they want me at first, I was sort of reluctant because I'm trying to learn the songs and everything, but they want me to be like, they don't, you know, they don't want me just hiding back as a bass player back to with the drummer. So as as each show goes on, I'm more and more turning into some, you know, uh, uh, um, oh God, what would be the word? I mean, it's a little bit more of a performer. 
Yeah, it's much more of that, much more of a ham, you know, it's just like, you know, so, you know, there, it's more like, like, the, like the concerts me and Steve used to go to when we were kids, you know, whether it be The Who or, you know, mm -hmm. or Joe Walsh or you know, whatever. I mean, uh, rock classic, 70s, 60s rock, rock band, you know. Right, right. And um, so, you know, I'm starting to like kind of have fun with it. You know, I don't, I don't mind it's fun at the front of the stage. Now, <laughs> now I see what those guys were doing. And, and now I understand why in the past they've said, stay back there. Right. It's way too fun up here. You right. know, we're, not, we're not sharing this with a right. face. Yeah, so, it's a different role for sure. Okay. So probably by the end of this tour, it'll be tough for people to tell the difference between you and say flea from the red hot chili peppers. Uh, pretty you. much. Absolutely. Yeah. As soon as I start, you know, uh, you know, working on some more on some, um, cartwheels, backflips and this yeah. sort of thing. Or, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I don't know if I'll quite, quite get to flea, but certainly a different version than what one would see, uh, with the news five years ago, for instance, or something. Um, yeah it's 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 a different role that's all it's like right. a a different it's a different tv show right but no that's the it is interesting and and uh um and it's you know it's great to hear that it's like no we want you up front and you know you're you're part of the show as much as anyone else exactly well chris you hopefully you that you know next year we're going to do more of the same and uh we're already uh they're putting together another journey run so Okay. That's going to happen again. And uh, we, I think we're going to do a little more in the tertiary market thing. Since so this past summer, we, we did all these major cities. I think we'll do a little more regional stuff. And I, I, I'm sure we get somewhere in your neck of the woods at some point next year. I'll let you know since I can. I would think so. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, and you can see me, The you know uh, uh barring injury uh, <laughs> the, the uh, different uh john pierce yeah exactly you know by then you'll have face paint and and uh, you know some sort of pyrotechnics probably not, prob and shirtless probably yeah right, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah um and then you know that does bring up the uh, uh, something that we kind of mentioned before when we were setting this up is um in the states you guys have been doing on this tour with, with journey and you know hell of a double bill um whereas in europe you're more headlining and um there's a there's kind of a different energy in europe for for total on the whole than mm -hmm. there is in the states uh in terms of quantity total number of people coming out um and i know you know that's true of you know any band there's parts of the world where they're you know yeah. huge and then parts not as much i'm wondering though is there any way to to, to answer why that may be the case with with uh, with this band and 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 europe in particular what made them resonate with Europe more so than the United States. Yeah. Sort of that, I, mean, that, I think it gets back to the, the, that type of music. They respond to more musicality than, um, than, than it also, the other thing is total really, I mean, they really have worked hard internationally. I mean, they've just booked here. They just come here more often. Mm. And so over the years, um, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, some uh, songs like Africa didn't hurt. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as big as it is maybe in the States, even as a song, it doesn't seem to necessarily sell tickets for some reason. Hmm. Um, over here, uh, it definitely does, you know, and yeah. they just have, they've just, Toto just has had more hits in Europe. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Um, the songs that I've never even heard, you know, 
it's ve- it's just a it's a whole different ball game over here. That's all I could say. Yeah, it really is. It's different. But I think that and it's definitely nothing new. And um, <laughs> that's what, for sure. You know, I mean, like one thing I um, I've seen a couple of times is uh, uh, Mark Martell and the Ultimate Queen Experience. Mark is the guy who did some of the singing for the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. the Queen movie, the, you know, the stuff that was not taken from uh, direct recordings. Um, and he's, you know, I mean, he really has a voice like Freddie Mercury, sounds fantastic. Um, one of the things he's talked about, he said, it's interesting, you know, bouncing back and forth between Europe and the States. It's like, um, there are some songs in Europe that are, you know, they're, they, you know, they're kind of into, but he said, there's one, you know, you'll go to the U S and it's like, Oh, you know, these people love this song. Whereas in Europe, they're like, Oh, I, you know, we never really heard this one, you know, is this a deep cut kind of thing? And whereas Absolutely. it's a major song in the United States. And so mm-hmm. that stuff, it, you know, I always find that just kind of fascinating because you would think a hit song is a hit song is a hit song, but not necessarily. No, it's interesting. And it's kind of, it's really hard to sort of figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's um there's not much i mean and i'm thinking about it all the time sort of wondering well what is it about this song that that uh it's making these uh, europeans go crazy and it might be a song that you know i like but it's not you know I, I, i'm not losing sleep over you know uh, its effect on me so yeah um uh, it, it really is a, a an interesting study. Someday somebody should will have to figure that out. What makes you know? And it might even be different from north to south here, or east to west. Uh, I'll find out. Mm-hmm. And we've got we've got quite a like. I mean, the next two years look like a lot of international travel: uh, Australia, Japan, South no. America. Wow. And so maybe we can, we'll do this from several continents. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and um, try to figure this out. Okay. 